Hey guys, Sam here. Welcome to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be talking about developing your own color negative film at home. So talking about the different things that you're going to need. First and foremost, I am using the CineStill C41 color negative development kit. This is going to help because it will give you both the developer as well as the Blix both of which are essential for getting the exposure that you took to actually show on the film. You're also gonna want a Patterson developing tank, a way to load the reels. My method is using a Patterson darkroom bag. This means that it's not gonna let any light into the bag when you're loading the film, so that way it doesn't get exposed additionally and you won't have any light leaks or anything like that. I also use clothes pins for drying for when I'm hanging my film. It means that they're going to dry in a pretty even manner. I also use an Epson V600 for scanning. And then some other things that are just useful in the development process is a thermometer, a funnel, brown bottles to store your chemicals in. You're probably going to want some distilled water for when you actually are mixing those chemicals together in the first place. So you're going to go ahead and just mix those together. There is labeling and packaging all over the kit once you actually receive it. So it will explain what you need to actually do in what order. And you're going to want to be a little bit careful just following the directions, but it's pretty straightforward. Once you're done mixing, you're going to have your developer and your Blix. Then you're going to want to load the film that you have onto the reel in that tank but you're gonna to wanna to do that in the bag so that way no light gets exposed to the film. Once you've already sealed the dark tank from light, you're gonna to wanna to take that out of the bag and then you can get over to the development process. So primarily, you're gonna to wanna to follow the instructions on your specific kit's card, but for the Cine Still kit, it's pretty straightforward because you just do about three and a half minutes of development time with give or take constant agitation. When it comes to the Blix, you're gonna be also doing it for about eight minutes and with give or take constant agitation. You're gonna to wanna to heat your chemicals up to certain temperatures, and these are gonna be specified in that kit as well with the instructions. The highest temperature that it allows usually is the fastest development time, so I'm gonna be using that. So before you actually do the development, you're gonna to wanna to pre-soak your film. This is gonna, with medium format film, actually create a very green liquid that you're gonna just dump out. So, First things first, you're just gonna take the developer, pour that into the tank. You're gonna wanna have about 10 seconds of agitation every 30 seconds or so. And you're gonna wanna make sure that this is fairly even, so that way no parts of the image get overdeveloped or underdeveloped. Once you're done developing for three and a half minutes, you're gonna go ahead and put that back into the bottle. Then you're gonna go ahead and start the same process with the Blix. So you're going to pour the Blix into the development tank, and that's gonna be about eight minutes that it's in there. Once you've completed the Blix, you're gonna go ahead and just pour that also back into the bottle. And at this point, you can actually go ahead and rinse it off. Following the Blix, you're gonna go ahead and run water through the tank just a couple of times. And this is gonna be your final cleanse. Well, once you've completed those steps, you're good to take the film out. Hanging the film, I like to first grab it by one end, the exposed end, from the reel with the clip that I use, and then I let it dangle, and then I grab the other clip and I will hang that so that way you get one clip at each end, the one on the bottom is weighing it down, and the one on the top is holding it up so that way obviously it's not touching anything, it's just hanging there. So now is probably the most obnoxious part, which is waiting. Uh, normally you're gonna wanna wait for about four hours for your film to dry, just so that way it isn't all sticky and wet uh, when you want to go ahead and scan it. Obviously once it is dry, that is when you can go ahead and scan it. So basically what you wanna do is just remove the clips and then cut the film into frames of, I use four per, because then it will fit into the holder for my Epson V600, as well as the archival sleeves that I use for my negatives. I'm gonna be making a more in-depth video detailing my scanning process eventually, but for the time being, basically what you wanna do is make sure that the actual scanning bed is clear of any debris, so you're gonna to wanna to use a blower, as well as maybe a cloth, and you're just gonna to wanna to clear out any type of dust that might have accumulated. Once that is done, you can go ahead and put that in the scanner. I usually like to go in using Epson Scan 2, 
do a preview so that way I can verify that it's got the correct frames, and then I'll hit scan. Typically I do it at 6400 DPI, that's the maximum optical resolution of my scanner. And I'd recommend that so that way you don't get any digital noise that you don't really want. Once the photos are scanned, I will typically do my editing in Lightroom. And if necessary, Lightroom also can open up into Photoshop. So personally, I really love the Lightroom suite. Plus it's accessible on my phone, my iPad, and my MacBook. So I can really just have my photos wherever I want. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. This is my film development and scanning process. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you're looking for more, make sure you subscribe. All right, well, I hope you have a great rest of your day.